Whenever I watch YouTubers from other countries visiting their local automotive superstore, I can't help but feel a little bit jealous. Americans have got AutoZone, Canadians have got Princess Auto, Australians have got Super Cheap Auto, but what do we have in the UK or here in Ireland? Now, while Halfords may be useful for picking up yet another 10mm socket or a tree-shaped air freshener, it's severely limited compared to those other places I just mentioned. All isn't lost though, because thanks to the internet, we've got access to a whole world of automotive products, which, much to the disgruntlement of your local postie, can be delivered direct to your door. That's right guys, I've been on AliExpress and I've found five really awesome cheap upgrades that we can fit to our Range Rover L322s. And I'm going to be fitting them and trying them out in this video today. So yeah, better make a start and make the most of this rare February sunshine. So these are the first upgrade we're going to be fitting today. And, as you can see, a pair of new fog lights. So as I mentioned in a previous video, these are LED replacements for the original halogen units on the front of the Range Rover. And if we take one out, you guys will see they've actually got a daytime running light ring around the outside as well. That's actually wired up separately to the main fog light itself, so you can have that come on with your headlights. For today, I'm just going to use them as normal fog lights. I'm not going to run the DRLs just yet, but we'll be able to try out the fog light section of this unit, which is the main part, really. These cost €42.12 delivered from China. It took about three weeks, and they're very similar to what you get in a lot of uh, UK-based suppliers. The same, same sort of thing they'll supply to you for a fair bit more money. Um, so yeah, let's try them out. So I should point out, these fog lights are actually only very specifically for the 2009 to 2012 Range Rover facelift, i.e. this one. The fog lights on earlier cars are different. There's actually three types on the L322 Range Rover, so you can't expect to get these and fit them to your 2002 model, for example. So on this model, the bezels are held, are held in with four sort of clips that go into the bumper. So with a bit of finagling with a, a thin flat-headed screwdriver, you can kind of pop them out and the bezel will come away like this. And that's the clips you can see there, you've got four of them. They need to be, some of them need to be pushed up, some of them need to be pushed down. Yeah, once that's out, we can then see three screws holding the fog light itself into the uh, bumper. So we go ahead and pull these screws out. They are Torx T20s by the looks of it. And then this guy should just pull straight out, as she does. Disconnect the super seal connector. There we go. So that's our standard H11 bulbed fog light unit from Land Rover. And these replacements aren't sided or anything, so we can just uh, pick a new one and throw it in. So as I said, for now, I'm not gonna wire up the daytime running light element of these lights, because um, it's a bit of a bigger job than I've got time for right now. So we're gonna tuck away this additional plug for the DRL LEDs, just here in the bumper. And we're gonna throw in Super seal connector, which fits perfectly. Tuck all the wiring back in again, and hopefully, and there we go. Lines up quite nicely. As cheap as these units are, they do actually appear to have a glass lens on them, which is quite nice. So yeah, that's not fitted. I should probably test it before I uh, put the cover back on again, but let's give it a quick try now. There we go. That was a good start. So to finish it off, we'll just chuck this bezel back on again. Which fits really nice. And that actually looks really cool, I think. It's a really good fit, that's for sure. Apart from being brighter, these should also match the headlights and the LED bar a lot better in terms of light temperature. So it should make the front end look a little bit nicer. I'll give you guys a quick side-by-side -side trial now so you can see the difference. So there you go, hopefully that's coming across on the camera, but the uh, unit on the left is actually very nice and white, matches the Xenon headlight really nicely. On the right, you've still got that classic yellow halogen look, so let's get him switched over. So there we go, that's those guys fitted. 
I actually think they look pretty nice. And I'm definitely a fan of the light temperature match we've got going on now. Happy days. So that's upgrade number one done. For upgrade number two, it's gonna be these guys. Now for these, I'm not entirely sure if this is gonna be an upgrade that stays on the Range Rover, because it might be just a little bit too tarty, so to speak, for me. Let, you go, let me know what you guys think, but these are LED indicator side markers, but they are the dynamic rolling ones that kind of scroll across. Now these kind of like dynamic LEDs are seen all over modern cars now, so I thought maybe we'd try them on the Range Rover just to see if we can modernise it a little bit, but uh, it may be too much. We'll see, how, we'll see what it looks like. This should be a pretty easy fit though. Let's get started. Like a lot of indicator repeaters, these should be a pretty easy removal and there shouldn't be any tools needed to get this done. So the way you do this is you just push the indicator all the way to the back of its socket. And then you should just be able to pull, pull the unit out and release it from the wing, just like that. And then all we've got to do is release this electrical connector, pull the old unit out, being careful not to let the wire drop into the wing because that would be a disaster. And then with this specific type of light, you can see it's got this kind of spade connector on the bottom. We've actually got to take the original light fitting out of the original unit, remove the bulb from it, and then this is the connector we're actually going to use for the light unit. So this spade will plug into where the original bulb went. And I'm going to be careful to keep this red wire on the right hand side of this connector so that it matches up with the original plug here. There goes the original bulb. Like that. So let's just pop that back in. And before I plug it in properly, I'm going to see if it works. So there you go. You guys can see that dynamic action I'm talking about where the LEDs roll across the face of the light unit. I think it's quite cool. Which way around should it actually go though? That way? Backwards? Or forwards? Hmm. Yeah, it's got to be this way. It only goes in one way. And there we go. So that fits it as easy as that. What do you guys reckon? Cool or a bit tarty? I'm on the fence. We'll see how I get on with them over the next few weeks. So these replacement units were 16 euros and 31 cents delivered to my door. Again, quite a bit cheaper than you might pay from a supplier in the UK. Sweet. Pretty good fit actually. Hopefully it's coming across on camera, that rolling LED animation, because it's quite cool. You can actually get these in a smoked plastic finish, so they kind of look black when they're turned off, but I thought these clear ones would kind of look a bit more like the uh, OEM look. Sort of an OEM plus look that I'm going for on this truck. Nice, let's get on to the third job. So, on to the next job. Probably see a bit of a theme developing here, because the next upgrade is more LEDs. Now these guys actually fit underneath the wing mirrors, and they're your kind of puddle courtesy lights. They come on when you unlock the Range Rover, or I think when you open the door as well. Anyway, this should be another nice, easy fit. Not sure how well you guys are gonna be able to see this. It's a bit awkward to film, but this should be as easy as getting your screwdriver in under the outside edge. And these guys just pull out nice and easily like that. Once this is released, we can twist to get the bulb out of the unit and we can take our LED replacement, pull this bulb out and then match the red wire to the red wire on the connector. Squeeze that in. Tuck that back up there, pop it into place. Easy as that. Looks pretty nice. Not that you're ever gonna see it. Oh, there we go. So when you unlock the car, they come on automatically. I can see already that's gonna be a lot brighter than the, uh, the standard unit there. Nice and easy. And these guys were 11 euros and 37 cents delivered to my house. Not bad. Sweet. That's job number three done. Next job. Are these are potentially gonna be the most useful of the upgrades that I've done so far. I've got four of these. And these are uprated interior LEDs. Now the boot of the L322 is actually really well lit up. It has these really well placed light units in the top tailgate. So when you open your tailgate, you've got a lovely illuminated workspace down here on the lower tailgate. 
and you've also got a third light on the interior which illuminates the main part of the boot. However, they're not actually that bright because they're, the, they're these tiny little capless bulbs. So what we're going to do is replace them with LED units and we'll see how much of a nice improvement that makes. So again, this is pretty difficult to film outside because I guess the sky is going to make it look a bit dim, but uh, all you need to do is stick your screwdriver in this end, pull that end down until it pops out. And then you can just unplug the light unit, take your new one, plug it in. Whoa, that's a lot brighter. Align the slots in that end, pop it in. Job done. That looks great. I mean, it is bright sunshine out here, but you can already see that's emitting a lot more light than the original one was. Pop the connector in. And in she goes. Very nice. I'm a fan of them. And then lastly, I'm gonna climb into the boot amongst all my tools and junk to get out of this guy here, which is again, the same type of light unit as we've just fitted. Thankfully, Land Rover were sensible when they specified these car interior lights and they use the same type pretty much everywhere. Incidentally, I think these light units are actually the same for Freelander 2 and Discovery 3 and 4 as well. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure they fit quite a lot of different Land Rover models. Nice. So I bought two pairs of these interior lights and they sent me back nine euros and 95 cents per pair. Not bad. So the next upgrade on the Range Rover is gonna be these Bevinzi V45 H7 LED replacement headlight bulbs to go in here. As I talked about in the video where I did this Osram LED light bar upgrade. So these are gonna replace those H7 halogen bulbs in there. And hopefully this is gonna improve my main beam visibility even more on the Range Rover. Let's give it a go. Now it's gonna be really hard to show you what I'm doing in here, so I'm gonna try and use the GoPro to try and show you what I'm talking about as I'm doing this changeover. But you guys obviously know how to change light bulbs on a car, but on the Range Rover, the H7 main bulb on this car is a bit weird because it's just pressed in, so you kind of just have to pull it straight out rather than fiddling with any clips or anything like that. But also these Bevinzi LED replacement bulbs have this ballast box, which also needs to be tucked away in the headlight. So I'm gonna show you guys where I'm gonna do that as well. Anyway, let's, let's throw them on. So first steps obviously is take off your cap on the back of your headlight. Just twist that anti-clockwise and it comes off. Then we're going to switch to the GoPro here. I'm going to drop this down inside. Hopefully you can see that. But you should be able to see a connector on the back of the bulb there. Um, so you just want to reach in, pull that off, tuck that out of the way. And then you're just left with the back of the bulb there, which you just need to grip. Which you just need to grab hold of, pull straight out the back of the headlight and it'll, and it'll pop out of the clips like that and it should pop straight out, leaving you with that nice hole there. So we're gonna take our replacement Bevinzi bulb, which has the same kind of mounting interface as any normal H H7 bulb, but then it also has this heat sink and cooling fan on the back to keep the LED part of it cool. Um, so, so it just fits in there the same way as any normal H7 bulb does. We've just got to find somewhere to tuck this, this guy away where he's not gonna get in the way of the, uh, the headlight operation. So hopefully you guys can see in there, there's like a flat tab at the bottom of the headlight socket, which we need to align with the tab on the bulb itself. So I'm gonna try and do that now and throw this bulb in. Apologies, you're probably not gonna be able to see much of my hand in the way. But we're gonna maneuver the headlight into position and then you just pop it into place and it should clip in like that. So that bulb's now in there and all I'm gonna do is just tuck this ballast unit down here where we've got some space down the side of the headlight. There's a nice little bit of space down there for it to tuck out of the way, so it shouldn't get in the way of the operation of the headlight or anything like that. And then all we've got to do is match up the connector with the plug on the new headlight bulb. Just making sure we match the red on the original plug with the plus sign on the lead for the new bulb. So we just make, make sure we've got our positive and negative the right way around. So once that's connected, it should look like that. And then we're just gonna literally tuck that in the same place as the ballast went down the side of the headlight bowl. And then that gives us a nice bit of space to put the cap back on again. With no problems. So you can hopefully see immediately the difference that's made. It's nice and white, it matches the rest of the uh, lighting on the car, and it's enormously bright compared to the original H7s. So I can't wait to try these out in the dark. Right, time for me to quickly throw the other side in now. A true blast of LED light from the front of the Range Rover now. Again, can't wait to try these out a bit later on. 
So you guys will know, if you try to search for H7 LED replacement headlight bulb, there's probably more than 100 different kits you can buy for your car. And it's really difficult to try and find one that's actually decent, that's going to give you good light output, that's not just going to fail straight away. I've tried quite a few different kits in the past and always had fairly good luck with them. But I actually discovered these from a YouTube channel called Sergio Gabor, and I'm, I'm really sorry if I mispronounced that, but I'll put it on the screen for you guys to check it out. Um, where he does awesome reviews of lots of different types of headlight bulbs and all kinds of different stuff you can buy for your car actually. But he basically did a very thorough test of these headlight bulbs and lots of other H7 models, um, testing their brightness and their durability and stuff like that. And these Bevensey V45 units actually came out fairly near the top of his tests. They're one of the brightest and he said the quality seemed pretty good. So, so yeah, they seem pretty good to me so far. They're a nice 6K Kelvin uh, light temperature, so they match the HIDs and everything else we've got on the front of the Range Rover very nicely. And yeah, we'll see how they go. Definitely looking forward to trying out the uh, main beams at night tonight, once it gets dark. However, there is one more cheap AliExpress upgrade I've got to do today, and that is these lovely autobiography armrest knobs to replace. Now, these are probably the best saving of all the upgrades I'm doing today, because if you buy these autobiography style knobs from a well-known UK seller, you'll pay nearly £100. Whereas these, the exact same thing, can be bought from AliExpress for about 30 quid. There's even quite a few of these on eBay UK and you can pick them up for again a similar sort of price around 30 quid. And when these arrived I was actually really impressed with them. They're nice, they're nice and weighty, they're solid aluminium as the original units are. They've got this nice black rubber finish around the outside as well. And overall they just look to me like pretty much the genuine article. But we'll get them fitted, make sure they work okay before I give them the final verdict. But yeah, basically this could be a really nice saving, especially if you're willing to wait an extra few days for them to arrive. So to fit this, all we're gonna do is pry apart these bottom plastic casings on the, uh, the armrest, which comes apart fairly easily. And then switching back to the GoPro again, hopefully you guys can see in there, there's this black plastic clip here, which we need to pull out, which will basically just release the knob from the, uh, the armrest. So that's literally all there is to this job. So I'm just gonna grab my uh, little tiny screwdriver, prise that out, I'll show you what I'm doing here. So now that I've prized it with the screwdriver, I can just pull this out, keep hold of it. And then this knob should literally just pull straight out. Easy as that. Then all we've got to do is take our nice autobiography knob, stick it back on where that one came from. It goes back on like that. Then we're just going to take our little black plastic clip Pop it back into position, stop it coming off, and then the armrest can go back on again. That is a really nice little upgrade. There we are, you don't actually need to take these covers all the way off, you can just get it open enough so you can prise out this clip. carefully without dropping it. Pull your knob off, get your new one on, and then once that's on we'll take our clip, pop that right back in again, stop it from coming out, and then we can just close that back up again. Making sure it's all nice and squeezed up tight. I think that's just a really nice little touch to the interior there. It just adds a little bit of extra class. I mean, there's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with these things, but they're just a bit meh, really, in comparison to these. And like I said, a really nice saving over uh, buying them through the normal passages, so to speak. So there we go. Happy with that.
So yeah, that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. I'm really happy with those mods. They turned out really, really well. All of them, in fact. Those LED fog lights up front should be useful in the Irish weather. And we've also got those powerful Bevensey V45 H7 main beams on there as well now. So I'm really interested to see what the uh, visibility on this car looks like at night time now. The other little LEDs around the car are just nice touches, really. The uh, extra light in the boot will definitely be useful, as will these under door mirror lights as well when I'm coming up to the car on, uh, on dark winter's night. I will put all the prices and links to these items in the description down below, so if you guys want to check them out and buy them for your cars, you can do that as well. They're not affiliate links, I've got no affiliation with AliExpress or anything like that, uh, so I won't make any money from you buying them, but, uh, but yeah, I just think they're nice little finishing touches that you can do to your L322. So, uh, but I guess the point I'm trying to make in this video is that uh, it's important to shop around when you buy uh, upgrades and bits for your Range Rovers and any car really, because there are a lot of suppliers out there that sell the same or very similar things for a vast range of prices. You know, the retail price of all these upgrades I've done, if you bought them from a UK retailer, you might be talking somewhere between four or five times the actual cost that I've paid for all of these upgrades. And granted, I did have to wait an extra couple of weeks for them to arrive, and the warranty situation may not be quite as strong as it would be if you bought it from a UK company. Having said that, places like AliExpress do have pretty good buyer protection now as well, and if you use PayPal, you usually get quite good support on that front as well. And at the end of the day, you might even weigh it up and say, I don't mind paying that extra price to those UK suppliers that are putting a markup on because I want that extra support and the fast delivery and things like that. And that's fine too. As you guys know though, I love a bargain and if there's anywhere I can save a few quid for upgrades on the Range Rover, then I'll definitely do it. So here we go guys, night has now fallen in Ireland. And what I've done is I've actually disabled the LED Osram light bar on the front so we can see what the uh, H7 LED bulbs are like just on their own without that light bar. So here we go, it's full beam. And that is actually incredibly impressive. That is amazing. You know, if I hadn't, if I hadn't fitted the LED light bar already, I'd say these are pretty much adequate for any normal road use you could find because that is a, an awesome spread of light as well as a pretty good long range as well. So that's actually been a huge improvement just on their own there. Compared to the H7 halogens that we had in there originally, that is uh, an absolutely enormous improvement in light output. Another thing we need to test obviously are those front fog lights. So. Uh, there you go, this is dip beam and front fog lights. And you can see that actually illuminates really nicely, quite close to the front of the car, but um, yeah, definitely a nice increase in light output. The fog lights actually seem to get used quite a lot in Ireland as sort of extra driving lights when the weather's poor. Um, I don't know whether the law is different to the UK where you're only really supposed to use it in very reduced lighting conditions, but uh, yeah, that certainly makes quite a nice improvement to the dip beam. And then in combination with that high beam, that's actually an incredibly good output um, without even having to add that uh, LED light bar in there you've got an awesome light output there. And back to normal dip beam here. So what I'm going to do now is quickly throw that relay back in again for the uh, spot for the spotlight bar and uh, then we'll do a full all lights blazing comparison. LED spotlight is back in action. So now when we hit our high beams, the uh, LED spotlight will be coming on as well as those brand new LED H7 main beam bulbs. So here we go. And wow! <laughs> that is some fantastic main beam action we've got going on there. I can see at least I'd say 600 yards down the road and now with those H7 main beam lights on as well we've got a huge spread of light across the entire road so the, the banks are really well lit up and I just hope the, uh, the camera is doing this justice as, as to how bright these lights are uh, going down this road because that is uh, something to behold. Back to dead beam. main beam. Yeah, that is a pretty awesome spread of light now. When I first fitted that Osram LED light bar, um, the light 
distance was actually fantastic, so it went really far down the road, but the spread across the road, because it's a spot beam, wasn't actually that great, so, uh, and the, uh, and the H7 halogen bulbs in that main beam just really went up to the task of, uh, of assisting that beam in, in, the, in the, like those long distances. However, now that we've got these H7 LED units in there, those Bevan ZV45s, We've got an amazing gradient of light across the front with, with also superb long distance throw from that spot, uh, spot bar, so yeah, I couldn't be happier with this, the way that this has turned out. Also throw the fog lights on there as well for maximum illumination. And now with all those lights on the front fully illuminated, I expect we look like some kind of supernova or star coming down the road because the light output off the front of this thing is pretty amazing now. I really wouldn't want to be in front of it if, uh, if I had all these on, on main beam. On dip beam it doesn't blind anybody, it doesn't, I don't get flashed by anybody or anything like that, but uh, yeah, if you really want to blind somebody now with this car, you can definitely do it by just flashing those high beams. And here we go, this is what the rear tailgate interior lights look like. Absolutely awesome at night. Look at that. This is like a, this is like a stadium now, with the amount of lighting we've got back here. These guys are fabulous. Any of you guys that use your trucks for overlanding or even you know tradesmen or people that use use their, their tailgate as a workspace will know just how useful this could be in the winter months. Awesome. These under wing mirror lights are actually amazing as well. They light up the, uh, the curb really, really well. So you're not gonna be stepping in any puddles with these lights, that's for sure. So that is going to wrap up my top cheap AliExpress upgrades for the Range Rover L322 guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, as a lot of you guys that are watching the videos aren't subscribed. So please do hit that subscribe button. It will really do the channel a favour. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Cheers, guys.